Hey everyone, Schnickerman here back with another video. This is going to be the newest entry into the retro gaming chemistry series that I have. I'll put a card here to link to that playlist. So far we had how do magic erasers work on a chemistry level and then we also talked a little bit about the chemistry behind removing GameStop stickers. Today's episode we're going to talk about the chemistry behind removing Sharpie. It's not uncommon to find things that kids or other people have written on with Sharpie. And especially in the retro gaming community, there's a whole effort for collectors to remove this kind of damage. So there's lots of home remedies out there, people coming up with different ideas and everybody thinks their method is always the best. But I know when I was younger, my brother and I had a Game Boy and we got Sharpie on it and then later I wanted to remove it. So the easiest thing that you could actually do is just take a simple dry erase marker, this is an Expo marker, and you just put the Expo marker on top, the Sharpie is completely gone and then you just wipe it away. We're gonna talk about why this happens and what's really going on in case you're curious. If we wanna understand why this interaction happens, first we need to understand what makes up each of these two markers. So first let's start with a Sharpie or a permanent marker. The main components are a colored dye, which in the case of black, you have all the different colors. Other colors, you have just a few different dyes or pigments. You have a combination of different alcohols, propyl alcohol, butyl alcohol, diacetone alcohol. For people who aren't familiar, dyes or pigments, they're a powder. In in order to turn it into something that you can write with, you have to combine it with different alcohols. And now this is also why you have to keep the cap on the marker or else it will dry out. So in this example, you have three different alcohols and you have the dye. What a Sharpie wants to do is it wants to deliver that dye and dry as soon as possible. Now, if you think about a dry erase marker, it's similar. The marker itself is wet it's delivering some dye to the surface, but there's a different kind of interaction there. Once the dye is on the surface, you can still wipe it away. So what are the main differences in the components? Again, you do have alcohol there. This time you have ethyl alcohol, maybe isopropyl alcohol, and you have what's called a resin. So the resin is what contains the colored component. The resin is designed in a way where it contains the color, but it simply sits on a specific surface, waiting to be wiped away or chemically removed. Another component of dry erase markers are the release agent. A release agent could be a variety of different chemicals. The release agent and the pigment do not interact. The resin and the pigment combine from both markers in the solvent, and then the release agent allows you to wipe away that permanent marker that was previously on the surface, whereas before, it would not wipe away. So Sharpie in its essence is just dye, pigment, color, and the delivery vehicle was the alcohol. So if you think about it from a simple perspective, how could you make the marker go back to the initial state? And to do that, you need to add a solvent or an alcohol to dissolve the dye back into that solvent that can then be wiped away or removed. If you look up other ways of removing Sharpie, you'll see that a lot of it involves alcohol, especially isopropyl alcohol. So it's a very similar technique. However, you have this resin which is made up of dye and a few other components. When it interacts with the pigment or the dye that's already on the surface of the material through positive or negative charge, when you're using the dry erase marker, it can act even better than isopropyl alcohol because there'll be an interaction between that resin and the dye that was already on the surface when you re-wet it with the solvent. And then when you wipe away, think about a dry erase marker leaving you with a fairly clean surface. I hope everyone learned a little bit from this video. It was a fun video to make. As a chemist, I hadn't really thought about the chemistry behind this in a while, so looking back and trying to gather the information that I needed to explain this to you was a lot of fun, and I really enjoy making these chemistry retro gaming slash cleaning videos. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like the video, share it around to a friend who might enjoy cleaning or retro gaming, anything that this video covers. Please be sure to check out my retro gaming chemistry playlist if you want to see See more videos like this. And please let me know in the comments if there's anything else that you want to know the chemistry behind, whether it's a cleaning technique or maybe more on the technology
technology side of how something works. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you like this type of content. I do a lot of different types of videos, but this is a series that I'm really passionate about and I am planning on doing more. I know right now I'm ha I have one idea, which is gonna talk about battery corrosion and exploding batteries, which again is relevant to retro gaming. And it's a lot of fun to talk about. It's close to my heart from what I did research on in my PhD. So you can look forward to that one coming out pretty soon. And as always, I just appreciate the support. I appreciate every comment. I love hearing from all of you and you motivate me to do what I do. So I appreciate you all. And until the next video, peace out.